Hey yo, Antonio. Do you ever watch TV or go on YouTube and after a while your eyes start to feel dry? Dr. Google suggests that using eye drops or artificial tears can help fix the issue. But whenever I go to use eye drops, I find that they help for the first few moments and after a while the dryness is back. But why is that? So in this video, we'll be talking about why our eyes feel dry in the first place, whether eye drops help with this issue and I'll also share with you when eye drops may not be the best solution. Our eyes are covered with tears. It's what helps protect and maintain the ocular surface. But there are times when we don't have enough of this liquid and it leads to a gritty and irritable sensation. This is what we refer to as dry eye. To us, it means that the eyes appear more red, the vision becomes blurrier, and they give off a burning sensation. To understand this concept, it helps to divide dry eye into two categories. One is aqueous deficient dry eye, and two is evaporative dry eye. A lot of you may already know that the tear film is made up of three layers, mucin, water, and oil. Aqueous deficient dry eye is when we do not produce enough water to keep the surface hydrated. This can stem from a number of different reasons, including post-surgery to autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's syndrome. Our eyes' ability to secrete tears diminishes as we age, and things such as disease and systemic medications such as antihistamines and beta blockers have also shown to reduce it further. The undoubtedly more common form of dry eye, however, is evaporative dry eye, which is when we are producing enough tears all right, but they tend to evaporate too quickly leading to dryness. Both categories exist on a spectrum and they can coexist, but they end up with the same result. The eyes producing poor quality tears that it's not happy with. It's easy for us to assume that the solution to dry eye is to simply use more eye drops. After all, if the eye is lacking moisture, then surely just add some in, right? Not exactly, and this is why. For a person to have dry eyes in the first place, there must have been something that upset the eye to begin with. The most common causes being exposure to irritants such as dust, pollen or smoke, not enough blinking when at a computer, contact lens overwear and excessive eye rubbing. These then turn into symptoms such as pain, blurry vision, stinging and watering. If we can properly manage the causes and eliminate them, then most of the symptoms can take care of themselves. Perhaps we could wear protective eye equipment to avoid irritants getting into the eye, or even being mindful of how much we are blinking at a computer can be incredibly helpful. Simply targeting the symptoms of dry eye, such as using eye drops, and expecting the issue to magically resolve itself may not be the wisest idea, as if the underlying causes have not been addressed, then this approach will be a temporary relief at best. Once we have identified the possible causes of dry eye and have done our best to address them, the next step should be focused on allowing the eyes to produce its own tears so that we don't have to rely on artificial ones. Our main objective here is to protect the ocular surface from the air as once the barriers have been breached, the cornea begins to signal danger, which is what leads to the worsening of this condition. Take a look at this example where the lack of oil production is leading to a quick evaporation of tears. All of the green that we see here are the tears being produced, but shortly after we can see that it disappears, exposing the cornea. A great way of increasing the quality of our tears is to allow the meibomian glands to produce oil, or meibum, well enough to help retain the moisture. In most cases, this can be achieved by simply heating up a wheat bag in a microwave to roughly 40 degrees Celsius, or the hottest our hands can handle, and applying it onto the eyes for about 5 minutes until the meibomian glands start to open up. Shortly afterwards, apply some gentle force upwards and downwards to squeeze out any existing blockage in these glands. Another approach could be to tailor our diet as consuming too much pro-inflammatory omega-6 oils as opposed to anti-inflammatory omega-3s have shown to impact mabum secretion. 
In regards to omega-3 supplementation, studies have suggested that you would need to take 2,000 milligrams of fish oil daily for three months for it to have a significant benefit. So far, we have implemented two ways of minimizing dry eye. The first is to identify the causes and address them to the best of our ability. And the second is to allow our own body to produce its own tears. But there are times when dry eyes still come out on top. Perhaps you work in a dusty environment and avoiding irritants is not as easy. Or perhaps you're on medications that you have little control over. Now we can introduce eye drops to see if we can minimize the dryness even further. This approach should be targeted at not upsetting the eye and helping it to reach its happy place, also known as homeostasis. For those that work outdoors, if you know for a fact that irritants are getting into the eye but you can't do much about it, then eye drops are an excellent way to flush out any dust or pollen from irritating the surface any longer. For those that work with computer screens, if you need to get a lot of work done and you know that blinking frequently can be an issue, then eye drops can be a great way to add a bit more moisture for some added protection. For those that suffer disease, if you know that your eyes are not producing enough tears despite our best efforts, then eye drops can make up for that deficiency. Eye drops are designed to help restore the chemical imbalance that may occur from the endless list of dry eye causes. In my opinion, it would be foolish to believe that eye drops alone can help fix the entire issue. Not to also mention that there are eye drops that have completely different formulations targeted towards different types of dry eye. Eye drops, however, should not make your eyes drier because they are designed to do the complete opposite. But using them without understanding why the eyes are dry to begin with may result in it feeling like a fruitless effort. When in doubt, your best option is to seek the help of an optometrist as they can accurately diagnose and tailor a management plan for the best outcome. If you have any questions or suggestions, then make sure to comment down below. But if you've learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.